Now, as I'm sure you know, you can't really have fun on the roads anymore. You know, there are too many speed cameras, there's a civil servant in a van in every bush. Uh, so, we've got a tip. Don't buy a Ferrari, buy a field. This field looks good. We could have fun here. Welcome, then, to Top Gear's roundup of outdoor toys. At the core of this scene, we have the quad bike, a simple device used by hill farmers to round up their sheep. They started out about 30 years ago in Australia as three-wheeled machines, but the accident rate was absolutely appalling. So bad, in fact, that in the States they were completely banned. But then about 20 years ago, someone at Suzuki had a great idea. He said, what if we put four wheels on it? And at that moment, the quad bike, as we know it, was born. Today, the choice is endless. Prices start at basic stuff like this for four grand and go from there, well, into space. You can have two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. That one has even got the same four-wheel drive system as a Lamborghini Murcielago. They even make giant ones like this. Of course, quads are all very well, but as Ozzy Osbourne and um, Rick Mayo will testify, even the fourth wheel doesn't stop them turning over and breaking every bone in your body. So for scaredy cats, there's this, the Arga Cat. At £12,000, it is pretty expensive. And with a top speed of 22 miles an hour, it's not exactly fast. But because you steer by breaking the wheels on one side, it can turn in its own length. And because it has eight-wheel drive, it's pretty much unstoppable when the going gets rough. And not only will it climb every mountain, but also it'll ford every stream. It's not deep water. Oh, but wait, it's gone all smooth. I suspect it is deep water now. And we're floating. You don't actually get a propeller well, you can put an outboard on the back, up to 10 horsepower. The drive is just coming from the wheels turning. It even steers slightly. I'd give the rest of my year's salary to see that sink. If he'd driven in and it had just gone to the bottom and there were just bubbles. I want him to keep talking as it goes down, like yeah. the captain of the Titanic. What did you say? We just say we hope it sinks. Yeah. It can't sink. It's made really? of polyphylene. Oh. Of course, these workhorses are all very well, but it took the young men of the world about five seconds to think, great. But what if we fitted stuff like this with really big engines? The result is that today we face a huge choice of machinery designed specifically to put a smile on your face and half a ton of mud up each nostril. And the question we have is simple. Which one do we like the most? This has got a kickstart, which is James's sort of thing. Am I in gear? Yes. Ah! See? Ah! I'm in gear now. I have no idea what gear I'm in, and it won't engage neutral. Well done, Mr. Mole Husband, you're off. Oh, my God! I hate this quad! This Honda has a single cylinder 450cc engine that makes a thousand million horsepower, and it's faster than light. The power is instantaneous. Watch. Ah! This has a top speed, and I know this because I've done it, of one million miles an hour. A million. 
What worries me most of all is that Hammond's going to go, hey, it's really brilliant. I can ride standing up and everything. And I can't. Because I'm too tall and I'm too old and I'm too fat and I hate it. I'll never, ever tell Jeremy, but I'm terrified. After a while, even Jeremy got the hang of his two-wheel drive Yamaha 450 racer. But we both agreed, for around £6,000, there are cheaper ways of getting dirty and dead. Where's James gone? Um, I think he was um, polishing his shoes. I just can't see James looking like this. I can't see anything. No, in fact, I was looking at something far more sensible. It's the Q-Pod, built by the unique motor company, Chairman Noel Edmonds. And he's very famous because he used to present Top Gear. It's got a 340cc, whoa, uh, single-cylinder engine and a twist-and-go automatic transmission just like a scooter. Interestingly, the Devonshire Constabulary use these for what they call off-road pursuits, which is presumably pursuing yobbos on quad bikes. You know why James is being even more sedate than usual, don't you? Tired, scared, I don't know. He's had an operation. Is he? Where? On his arms. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's why. Oh, that's. It's why he hasn't been with us on a saddle. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That would be this... sore. It's true. I was much happier in my Q-Pod Sport. You get seat belts, headrests, and uh, two comfy chairs, all for five thousand pounds. And now, here's the thing I like best. Completely road legal. Completely. And it'll do 45 miles an hour. You need never, ever drive it off road. Oh, joy. Of course, the ultimate off road toys are the buggies. This idea began with the Honda Pilot. Brilliant, but it didn't have a differential, and that meant cornering was tricky. This scared a lot of Americans, and Honda, being a big company frightened of lawsuits, dropped it, which opened the floodgates for everyone else. And now, if you don't mind, I'll leave it to my colleagues so they can explain. Oh, my God! end of the scale we have this 13 horsepower called a bow cart now my wife actually bought me one of these and it was a bit like having one Japanese fighting fish so now we've got another and every child that comes to our house has to have a go and some of them haven't been killed at the other end of the scale we have stuff like this this is the Draca which will set you back twelve and a half thousand pounds Costs about the same as Hamster's Drakkart and looks similar too. But this has a 900cc Honda Fireblade engine and it's a lot more sophisticated. Six speed sequential box goes from 0 to 60 in 103 seconds. It's quicker than a Ferrari Enzo. I got disc brakes from Brembo. It's like a little Formula One car. One of those. Yeah. Oh, I'm in a fighter power. jet. You know the quads? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. comfortable. Yeah. 
Mr. May! Like I said, yobbos. Well, my voice is ruined. My clothes are ruined. My, um... I'm ruined. Your yes. boss, yes. Yes, yes but look at the field. That is ruined. Yes, and we did that in just one day. And there are eco-mentalists who will tell you that that will take about 25,000 years to recover. Yeah, because of our damage. Because of our damage. So, to finish off, I've brought along a toy that causes no damage whatsoever. Yep, a hovercraft. You build them yourself for around £6,000. This one actually belongs to a vicar, and he's very kindly brought along two more, so we can all have a play. Now, listen, chaps, I have had the pleasure of driving one of these before, and there are one or two things I just need to tell you. First of all, OK, if yeah. you see an obstacle, like if we're going over there, you see one of those trees coming towards you, it's too late, you're going to hit it. All right, OK. Well, you're not worried about that? Well, if that's what happens, I don't know what happens. No, you see, if you turn the, you'll turn the handlebars, that won't make any difference. Right. Straight on, OK? So you think, all right, I'll lift off the power, the air will come out of the sack, it'll dig in, and you'll be jettisoned at 50 miles an hour into the tree oh, you so were you breaking. Oh, so you hit the tree with or without the hovercraft. Yes, it's that's your choice. tricky, but they ride on a cushion of air, which one of us, at least, thought was brilliant. And look, they didn't damage the field in any way. I've been killed. I've definitely been killed. Unfortunately, sadly, he wasn't actually completely killed. No, but we were nearly killed in a rather unusual way because you know that big mud bath that we were charging oh, yeah. around in? Yeah. We ate quite a lot of it, you couldn't help it, and we were told when we were going home that it wasn't mud and it had all come out of... Out of the back of a deer. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, so that's deer. what we ate a lot of. What was your favourite from the day? Well, I have to say, the hovercraft was the most bottom-friendly, yeah. I suppose, but actually, I'd have the Q-Pod. I mean, it's a bit expensive, but it is a proper car. I don't know, if I was going for utilitarian, it'd have to be one of these. Put a V8 in it. Fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. But, enough of the utilitarian stuff, if we were to go to one of those off-road centres that's springing up all over the place, where you can rent stuff out and do what we did, yeah. what would you have? And I'm telling you straight away, it wouldn't be the racing quads, <laughs> because you might as well just say, I'd like to rent some death, please, yeah. for the day. Yeah. I want to be dead within yes. the end. Yeah, certainly, sir, have one of these. I would say from the day it would be the buggies, the two buggies we finished up in. They were I agree. fantastic. I do agree with you on that. Question is which one? Because your drag art, great fun, lots of sideways That's action. Hooligan stuff. But quite unsophisticated. It was like going sideways in scaffolding. <laughs> now, yeah. this one, the Rage. Lovely piece of engineering. It's beautifully built, and for that reason, I'd have the Rage. And that's the one I'd have. Hey? Eh? You? <laughs> you yeah. must have healed. And on that bumshell, it's time to end the show. Uh, thank you very much for watching. See you next week. Good night.